Hello, this is David James, and uh, we're gonna, just going to keep right back at it. This is part one, um, continuing. Um, lawlessness will greatly increase and be multiplied. So we, we hit that as the last point on this thing. So the spirit of lawlessness is the spirit of this age, and it, it shouldn't take any of us much convincing to know that. So... Because lawlessness will abound, the Bible says, the love of many will wax cold. That's what another scripture says. Now, based upon this, you can expect to be heavily persecuted. Now, a lot of the Western church, in fact, most of it um, in North America and Western Europe, um, has seen virtually nothing in the way of persecution. I mean, getting shadow banned on different networks uh, isn't persecution. Um, when you level it up against what's going on in many parts of the world. And that will be coming. Uh, who knows when, but it's well on the way. I live in Canada, and uh, anybody paying attention has seen what's gone on up here uh, with our, you know what, in Ottawa, and uh, our networks and our governments, um, which have had the knives out, for the truth and for the gospel for quite some time. Uh, Liberty left this land quite some time ago, in case you haven't noticed. In fact, one of the networks um, in this land is called the Rebel. Now, let's look at Luke's account. Now, I love this one in Luke. Um, it nails it in certain ways. It says certain things that Matthew 24 doesn't say. And then uh, Matthew says things that Luke doesn't. That's why we need all the voices. That's why we need all the witnesses. So here's another one. And when these things begin to come to pass, then, okay, when they begin. So remember that long list of things beginning to come to pass? Nations shall rise against nation and earthquakes in diverse places. When they begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads, for the Antichrist is coming around the corner and the mark of the beast. All Christians, stir up your food and get ready to ride out the next seven years. Yeah, this. Wait, no, it doesn't say that. It says, look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. That means it's close. Lift up your heads means Jesus is coming for you. Now, when these things begin, not when that whole list is completed, necessarily. This is where the command of watchfulness means the most. It is because you don't know the day or the hour that we are told to be awake and watchful so that that day does not take us by surprise. So this, this element of watchfulness um, the only place we saw watchfulness to any degree um, in the Old Testament was when it was spoken of um, guys like Ezekiel and Jeremiah that were watchmen for the nations. Um, but all Christians today are called by Jesus personally to be watchful. And this word uh, for watchfulness occurs, or, or words like it, uh, watch, um, look, um, be diligent, and, you know, observe for these things. So, you only watch for something when you don't know when it's coming, okay? So, if Apple is having, uh, and they've announced, okay, the next iPhone is coming out on October 5th, we're all going to gather here in this one place, you don't need to watch for it if you know the date you can just show up online or in person. So it's because you don't know the day or the hour of his coming that we are told to be awake and watchful. So that day will not take us by surprise. All right. First Thessalonians 5, verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Okay, so... Out of verse 28 in Luke 21, that day, okay, watchful for what? For that day, that time, that occasion. 
So, verse chapter Luke 21, 7, and they asked him, saying, Master, when shall these things be? What sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Now, this is the beginning of Mark, of, of Matthew 24. Um, this is Luke's account of that. Now he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draws near. Don't go after them. But when you hear wars and commotions, don't be terrified. But these things must come to pass first. The end is not by and by. Matthew says the end is not yet. Then said he to them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. That means all these different places, even unusual places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, um, I've done some looking into this, but you know that the stars and the sun and the moon um, and the galaxies and all the heavenly goings-on um, above our atmosphere, they were given to us in the very beginning, in Genesis, for times and for signs and for seasons. That's, that's how we tell time, right? That's how we have a solar clock, and that's how we have a lunar clock. That's how we have two calendars, by looking at the sun or the moon, depending on who you are. So all that is also speaking. We're not going to touch on that in this study. That's all by itself. And there's a lot of people that would do a lot better job than I would bother with. So let's rewind from verse 12 below where it says, but before all these things. Okay, so here's Luke's account. Before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you. So I'm expecting persecution before the rapture of the church. I'm not expecting to get off with what the rest of the world has been dealing with um, their entire existence. Um, now, you'll be brought into, before synagogues, prisons, and kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. You know, um, the West doesn't understand. Some have a calling. And what if your calling is to die? for the gospel. Would that be horrible? Do you know, there's, um, I know very well that there's people in certain parts of the world that would give anything in their situation to die for the gospel. Um, and, you know, there's a crown of glory that is set aside for these people. There's a martyr's crown and it'll turn for a testimony and a reward. Now, it's also you can testify to Jesus because there are no martyrs, no true martyrs um, that give glory to God more than a Christian martyr. Now, settle it, therefore. Okay, so going into all this, we're at the end of the age. Settle it in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So you're going to speak with such wisdom. Do you remember um, on the occasion of the stoning of Stephen? And he preached this amazing sermon before they started stoning him. He spoke. They literally um, uh, uh, tore their clothes and, and they literally went crazy. And then they stoned him to death. I'm convinced the Lord took him. Um, um, before before he actually, you know, succumbed to all that. That's where the Lord himself stood up. He was the church's first Christian martyr. So, it gets worse though. You shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In other words, nothing's lost when it's for serving, uh, serving the Lord. In your patience, possess your souls. Okay, so you're gonna. That means that you're gonna suffer what's coming, because you know God's got you, and your patient endurance 
will pay off in the end. That's really what that means. Now, what follows in Matthew 24, 15? Moving all the way through Matthew 25, 46. So 31 verses in Matthew 24 through um, Matthew 20, well, no, actually it's more than that, um, is God's wrath, okay? So God's, there's, there's such a thing as persecution and then there's such a thing as wrath. And don't be confused by the difference. The, the, the persecution that will come um, is because they hate God, okay? Persecution comes because people hate God. It's not because they hate you. It's because they hate God. Now, wrath is where God is punishing the world. God is punishing disobedience. And if you read the Old Testament, where God had to punish his people, he had to discipline his tribes because they were disobedient. They'd cry out, he'd rescue them. They'd sin again, they'd cry out, he'd rescue them. But there was always a price to be paid for every incident. And boy, there's some stuff coming due in both Canada, the U.S., and some other Western countries, if I'm keeping track. Now, it's, interest, it's fascinating to note the context of Jesus' teaching of perhaps the two most important kingdom parables, the ten virgins and the talents is sandwiched in these verses. So, two parables, probably, arguably the two most well-known parables, two most quoted and misunderstood are the parables of the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, and the parable of the talents sandwiched in these verses. So at the end of days, this, these examples are the prime examples and only found in Matthew 25. It's right in the middle of all this end time uh, scenario. Now, let's look at the importance of watching. This one out of Luke 21, verse 34, take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. So you're to watch so something unexpected doesn't happen to you. Again, back to watchfulness, okay? Take heed to yourselves. Watch, therefore, in verse 36. Now, listen carefully and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, let's look at the parable of the versions just as an overview real quick. Any of you that might be familiar with it. In the parable, there are 10 virgins. Okay, so that tells us that there are 10 that are set as, that are that that are supposed to be set aside. So they all call themselves virgins. But the way the parable reads is there are virgins and then there are chaste virgins. Okay? So the chaste virgins would be those that are sanctified to the coming of the master sanctified to the coming of the bridegrooms. These, these are the ones that have oil in their lamps. These are the ones that have light to see where they are when the master calls, where they're going when the master calls, and then they're welcomed into the bridal chamber. The other five, again, they're still virgins, but they weren't set apart. They did not set themselves apart for the bridegroom. They did not patiently wait. They did not watch diligently. They did not pray, again, oil in the lamps or no oil in the lamps. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And the whole, a lot of the thrust I'll be dealing with in these lessons 
is the fact that his church, his sanctified bride, is not set apart for wrath, but is set apart for salvation and glory when the bridegroom comes. And uh, join me on the next one, and we'll pick it up uh, continuing in part one.